To your point, I think mm-hmm. what we with the South Jersey scene is missing, other than myself, is like you said, that humbleness. I've yeah. been dealing with, or I've dealt with, uh, you know, local rappers from the area, and I'll reach out to them to collab or do this, that, and the other, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, um, yeah, you got to reach out to my manager. Like, nigga, what? Bro, we all the, the same The fuck boat. is you talking about? Exactly. South Jersey, we they all the same They don't understand that, because they feel like, you know what I mean, and within their little circle, yeah. they hot. But I'm like, bro, nobody, if you, I'll I, I say this, man. If you can't walk up and down the street and ask the average Joe, yo, you ever heard of such and such? Mm-hmm. If, and if they can't say, yeah, I heard of him, I fuck with boy, or whatever the case may be, or even not just I heard of you, yeah. you ain't buzzing yet. Oh! This is the crap! <laughs> 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 it's your boy, Mookie, getting money that's one of likely. Today we got one of them real South Jersey MCs in here. CMD's finest. We got the homie LO in the building. What's going on, bro? How you, bro? Appreciate you coming through. Appreciate you coming through, man. I mean, you fresh off that uh, that tape with uh, nothing to play with, GX Gotti. I mean, what you been doing, man? What you been doing since you dropped that? How shit been going? Working on the new shit. Working on the new shit. On to the next one, huh? Yeah. All right, all right. I mean, how'd y'all even link up with that? Like the uh, you and GX Gotti. He he's one of uh, he on your team or just yeah. one of the homies? Yeah, so I met him through a family member. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And so we tapped in like that. And uh, I reached out to him because I heard something that he did with, you know what I mean, a family member of okay. mine. And uh, shit, we just locked in. All right. So he, uh, CMD too? Yeah, South Jersey. Oh, okay, South Jersey, South Jersey. I mean, yeah. South Jersey, we got to start doing more collabs, co- connecting. I'm from South Jersey too, you know what I mean? Down the highway bowl, down the highway bowl. But it's all family. It's all family. Uh, we just gonna get right into it. One of the traditions we have on No Scope TV is that uh, we like to get into the artist's origin story. Like, how did you get into this thing we call hip hop? Like, when did you first start rapping? Yeah, start giving people them bars, man. So, like I tell everybody, you know, what I mean, I came out the womb with a mic in my hand. Uh, you know, what I'm saying uh, like freestyling as a kid. Family members got home video of me rapping and shit like freestyling off the top of my head okay um so it was just something i always did man same way a bird fly or a fish swim that's the same way i rap all right you know yeah oh so you lit this shit you lit this yeah. rap shit yeah. so like your first project like when did you when did you finally get in that booth and really start like you know what i mean give yeah. it to him like so i recorded i started recording in um like 0809 like senior year of high school maybe i might have been a junior Okay. Yeah, it was this little studio not far from the school I was you going to. You went to the to. high or you went to nah. Wilson? Nah, I went to another school. Oh, okay. I was going right. to Glassboro at the time. Oh, okay. All right. All yeah, right. True, yeah, true, true, So, everybody was like, yo, you, you know what I mean? You nice. You got to go to the studio. You got to go. I'm like, yeah, all right. And then one day, I finally popped up there, and I was living there. Like, I was the young boy. So, man, I lit her, man. Right after school, I walked straight to motherfucking to the studio. Uh-huh. And there'd be other people recording or somebody in the side room chopping up a music video. Yeah. And I just love that shit. I was just living there, dog. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take it back even further than that. Uh, who were some of your early influences? Like, who was, who did you see? It was like, yo, I want to be like that nigga when it comes to this rap shit. Shit, like, nigga, like Pac. Jay, Nas, uh, Dig. Those is my top influences. DMX. All right, um, shout out to X. Yeah. Shout out to all that. Yo, them, I man. remember this one time. Uh, I was like, I was little, man. I was, I'd be riding around with my dad. My dad, you know, was, you know, was doing his thing back when I was little. Okay. He had me, you know, had me around. You know, you got a son. You had your little, your little nigga with you. All uh, right, facts, facts. So, uh. I heard Snoop Dogg, Gin and Juice. Oh, I'm classic. A little, I'm a little nigga. Yeah. I'm I'm a baby, bro. I come home singing that shit. <laughs> my mom was like, my mom called my dad, say, don't be having him listening to that. <laughs> so it's just hip hop is just, I don't know, man. I just always took to it. Yeah, I mean, that early 90s music, it just had niggas hooked, bro. How could yeah. you not? No I mean, that's the, that's the essence of it. Yeah. So seeing as you say that's some of your influence, I see you're like more of like a traditional like MC, you're not really on that new wave type shit, mm-hmm. but you sound modern. Being a South Jersey artist, I'm coming through with that traditional hip hop sound. Do you feel like it's harder to get people to latch on to it, or like, what are you like some of the, like the fans that you're looking for? I mean, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes you get pushed back. 
You know what I mean? Motherfuckers not being able to wrap their heads around it because yeah. they so used to the dumbed down version of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, I like to give different sounds. Like if you heard the What They Want album, it's more lyrical. Mm -hmm. But then I linked up with the young boy and I'm like, all right, niggas talking about it sound outdated, quote unquote. Yeah, so he let me, came and brought that young, let the me younger give, essence. Just to, to let them know, like, nigga, I, I come from the essence. Don't think I can't right. switch it up. Right. I could do that shit too. So I like to give them that. And certain projects, every project got a different sound and a different motive. Okay. You know what I mean? As to what I'm trying to do. All right. That was a good, like, uh, match right there. Mm hmm. Uh, I shout, shout out to that Nothing to Play With project. That Jones, that shit is fire, bro. Thank you, bro. Um, But speaking on that, what what they want, uh, that album, that uh, the single, the No Doubt, that John, that's like. Well, that's on What They Want. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shout out to that, What They Want, John, because I'm fucking with the sample. The mm. sample right off the bat had niggas hooked. Then you had Bring the Shorty in on the hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see where you was going. Like, that right. John, that's, yeah. that, that's that, that essence right there, that hip hop. Right. Thank you. That uh, that real hip hop, exactly. uh, South, coming from South Jersey, what do you feel is like one of the hardest obstacles that you face, like in this music scene? Like, what is one of the hardest obstacles you face coming from South Jersey? Trying to get the looks, cause yeah. you can't be like, oh, I'm from Philly, oh, I'm from New York. So when you come from South Jersey, it just give you that extra edge, that extra push, cause you know, motherfuckers is like. Jersey. Yeah. You know I mean, a New York nigga gonna be like, Jersey. They or they the same North, thing for they thinking Newark, fucking Orange. I mean, don't get it fucked up. Yeah. Camden got a, got the name and all that, too. Yeah, right. But even still, you come to Philly, oh, I'm from Camden, it's like, you know what I mean? So you gotta yeah. really be hot. You gotta really be hot. You gotta really be about this shit to really establish yourself. Okay. Um, what do you think separates you from them artists, like those other Jersey artists? I just feel like the fact that I'm really locked in to the culture from from a ground roots level, like a grassroots level. Like um, I make records, um, I make sure I got hooks. Um, I'm even stepping up my songwriting ability to where I'm at and bridges to my songs to make them full That's songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like I separate myself from just being able to really tap in from a creative level and just my work ethic. I feel like is the way I separate myself as well. Mm -hmm. So you speaking on bridges and hooks. So you really working. What is your studio sessions like? Like do you go in on a night and do like six to seven jaws, or you really hit that the pen in the pad mm -hmm. and like really pan that shit out? Like it take you uh, like a while to do music. So when I was younger, like I was telling you, you know what I mean, as a young boy going to the studio, I would work like that. I would do mad songs. Now I'll go in and like be laser focused on my one joint. Sometimes if I got a, a lot of things to get off my chest, like I know I got two or three songs I want to lay, I'll do that. But a lot of times I'll go in there and focus on, do like a one or two hour session, lay my song. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go and listen to it. This is my creative process. Then I'll go and listen to it. Wow. And I'll be like, damn, all right, I want to change this. I want to do that better, do this better. Then I'll keep tweaking those songs uh, until I feel like uh, it's what I want, until, okay. until I'm happy with it. And I feel like it's release ready. Okay, so when you're recording, are you one of the, do you want to do you, are you one of those artists that like the studio to be like a party or you need that joint to be like a study hall you need to be comp you yeah. locked in yeah I'm I, locked in you locked yeah, in it's me yeah, and my you, engineer I don't um, know how if you would be doing that shit having like fifty niggas in there y'all yeah. drinking you got I never girls. needed that I never yeah. needed that man I'm that's locked a distraction. in I got ADHD man I'm yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I'll be off going doing some if other that's shit. the vibe if I'm working with another artist and yeah. that's the vibe like I don't even be the type of nigga that go in there and be drinking and smoking like. Mm. I'm just there to in, work. Yeah, I mean, like I said, if I'm working with another artist and that's how he'd want to record and he'd like to record, then fuck it. We could do that too. But uh, I'm usually just focused, laser focused. So I see, I mean, you up here, you messing with the homie Q right now. No doubt. You know I mean? Shout out to uh, Q the Question. He in the building. How is marketing uh, and promotion nigga in the city? Oh, 100%. You know I mean, you need it done, hit Q up, man. You, know, you try to get your shit right, hit Q up. But, uh, so you've been running around in the game. So you've been doing shows and all that, uh, little industry events. What are some of the industry? Uh, did you run into any industry like uh, scams, them showcases, yeah. them ticket sales, some pay to play, perform Jones? What's some of them Jones you ran into yeah. on your travels since you've been working? So when I was younger, I, I tried the Afton shit. Oh when, my god! When they told me I had to sell tickets, I was like, man, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, nah, bro, I don't be fucking with the uh, like the 
the uh, the showcases and the motherfucking uh, the ciphers and shit. Yeah. Like it, I just never made it a priority. Um, I just felt like I don't know where was that really gonna get me if a lot of times I noticed with them showcases it'd be nothing but other rappers in the crowd. Facts. And I'm trying to push to the listeners, to the fans. So I know when I start doing shows, I wanted to be a little bit more intimate, where it's just me and my fans, a uh, little small cap venues, mm-hmm. and just lock in with me and the people who fuck with me from a fan standpoint. Right. So I ain't really off that uh, showcase type shit. I mean, I fuck with it if that's your grind, and that's right. how you want to go about it. But you know, my style is a little different. I mean, speaking of performing, are you more of a performance guy or like an in-studio artist? Like, you love the writing and, and making the songs, or do you like performing better? I mean, you got to perform. You know what I mean? That's part of this shit. Uh, right. I know Lil Wayne says, studio, set, stage. Mm. That's the only thing he wor- worry about doing. I'm on, a, I'm in the studio, I'm on set shooting a music video, or I'm on stage. Right. So, uh, I'm the type of nigga I want to be rehearsed. I want right. to have a little uh, 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 merch table on the side. I just want to mm-hmm. do it the right way. So when I get to that point where I feel like the demand is high enough for my music, I'm going to mm-hmm. tap in, you know what I mean, doing the shows and whatnot. Okay, all right. I and mean, it makes sense. So, I mean, have you been to any of the local venues? Did any shows, like, what's one of your uh, favorite venues that you worked at so far? Um, I haven't been uh, performing, man. Like, i just been, like I said, trying to build up the catalog, build okay. up the content. Right. And when that started buzzing, it's like, all right, now it's time. Alright, alright Yeah Alright, cool So You, uh Building the catalog Yo, Q, what you doing, man? You say you're supposed to be recording the content Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, why, Q why, in the building I'm saying he always work You can't get this man to stop working, bro Alright You know what I'm saying? Six videos, right? My nigga, my nigga Alright Alright, so we had the industry Alright So what we're gonna get into Is what we like to call Your dream situation It's where You will Basically, if you had things your career go the way that you want it, mm-hmm. in a perfect situation. So what I'm going to ask you right now is if you had things the way you wanted it in your dream situation, what label would you sign to, if any? My dream dream situation, bro? Yeah. Low to over money is my independent record company. Okay. And so, shit, man. You know how Birdman and them did it? Like, they had uh, cash money and they went with... Partner un- with a major? I think they went with Universal. Universal, That's my yep. dream situation. Okay. To build up my shit to the point where uh, Sony, Warner, or Universal is, you know, wanting to sit down with me and I, I'm able to, you know, be a subsidiary a subsidiary uh, of them. Okay. You know what I'm All saying? Right. But I, I ain't mad at a Def Jam. They come All calling right, and right, right. see what they talking about. I mean, loyalty over money, that's the label. You have uh, how many artists? It's just you right now, or you got yeah. a couple artists? Just me. Okay, yeah, smart man. You yeah, can't yeah. be, you know what I mean, you got to build yourself up before, right. you know what before I mean? Before I can talk about doing that's something like for somebody else. That's like when you want plane that's going down, you got to put the mask on yourself before you put it on somebody else. Exactly. Facts, facts, facts. All right, so in your dream situation, you said you'll do a partnership with Universal. Uh, you need one. Sony, produ- Sony or Warner. Okay. One so of the three majors. One of the majors. All right. So just, let's just say you'll do a partnership with a major. Mm-hmm. Um, next I'm going to ask you, you, you have to have a producer, any producer produce your first album. Just one producer though. Who would you get to produce your first album? The whole thing. Top to bottom. Dr. Dre. Woo. I so need that. Going, I need that perfection. That hip-hop route. I yeah. mean, he's just a perfectionist and he known for that. So I know he's going to take his time. And craft my shit and be meticulous about how he go about it. Saying right. he gonna do, f- man. When I seen what he did for fifth, I'm like, who the fuck else you gonna go with? Right. Shit. Yeah. He did fifth. M. Kendrick. Yeah, he, he ain't nothing to play he with. Yeah, he ain't yeah. nothing to play with. Like the name of my last album. Yeah. <laughs> mm. For real. All right. So so far in this dream situation, we got you partnering with a major label. First album produced by uh, Dr. Dre. All right. Next, we gonna need you gotta go on a tour. So you got to pick two artists that you fit that you feel will fit the same uh <laughs> I wanna say algorithm, but we talking about real life. Somebody that'll fit with you to go on tour. What two artists would you pick? Any budget, you can get anybody. Dead or alive? Well obviously, alright, boom. I, w- I, w- I said that cause man, R.I.P. Nipsey Hustle, bro. That's my favorite like RIP, modern yeah. day artist. Um if it's not Nip, it'd be definitely Meek Mill. Okay. Another artist, shit, uh, Butcher, Benny the Butcher, dog. Uh, Meek and Benny, L.O. That'd be crazy. You know what I mean? Crazy. Out of CFD. All right, all right. I can see that. I can see that. That's going to go crazy. So, okay. all right, we're going to do the recap real quick. We got 
partnering, partnering with a major label, Dr. Dre producing the first album, mm. and you're taking, you said, Meek uh, Benny the Butcher and uh, Meek on your first tour. Yeah, you helped me manifest this shit. Uh, in fact, <laughs> you gotta speak that shit, shit to existence. Yeah, bro, nigga. shit, that fuck shit that. definitely can happen. Yeah, but uh, fuck with that. We gonna, uh, we need you to do, we gotta get that clout up, though. Yeah. We gotta, uh, the album's coming, the tour's coming, bro. We gotta get your name in them headlines, Birth bro. Birth by the Cold, the new shit, coming soon, you heard? We gotta get your name, I know I'm saying. You gotta do a, you gotta have a uh, a scandal with a model or an Instagram model. <laughs> I'm working on teams, that. You gotta get teams, I'm on the gram up, every day and demon bitches like uh, what's your name? Uh, yeah, yeah, Where yeah you I'm from? saying. All uh, right, you had to have a fake relationship. <laughs> you gotta have some, I mean, Lori Harvey, Kim Kardashian type shit. Who you going with with that? I mean, just to promote the album. I mean, you need a fake sure. relationship or a scandal. Yo, you ever seen the bitch Jay Ramey? Nah, I ain't never Jay seen Jay Rainey, bro. Y'all got to look her up on the grid, man. Shout out to <laughs> Shout out to Jay Rainey. I'm sure you a bad job. If I could have a fling with Jay Rainey, God dang. Damn, bro. I'm out of here. Shit, I mean. And, shit. and uh, yo, the new chick, the little young chick with the song Water. What's her name? Tyler? Oh, she like a little. She do the. Um, Tyler bad as shit. That's like like the uh, Afrobeats type shit. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Shit, for sure. Cute, funny. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, nah, she's sexy. I like her. All right, man. So, look like that first album going platinum, cause you got the major label support. You know what I'm saying? You got Dr. Dre producing the album. You got Meek and Benny the Butcher on the first tour, and you got the John. What'd you say her name was? Jay Ramey. Jay Ramey. God, oh, man. motherfucking the scandal. I mean, how can you go wrong? This my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and we gonna speak that into fruition. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But yeah, that's the, that's one of my favorite segments. It's called the dream situation. Yeah. Let's see what artists. Let me like what you want out of this shit. Let me because you're doing it for a reason. Right. But um, let me see what else we got. What else we got? Uh, what do you think the South Jersey music scene is missing? Me, <laughs> I guess how, that's my next question. Like, how you think we can fix it? Like, yeah, by getting me hot, getting my buzz up, so I, I could represent. I mean, I can't disagree with that. Everybody should feel that way. You know what I mean? We, we all. I think it just needs to be more collaboration, bro. It needs to be like a joint where everybody can collab. Everything is spaced out. Yeah. Everybody on the same level and fight. Because right, it's right. not really too many niggas that's like. You know what I hate, bro. To your point, I think what we, with the South Jersey scene, is missing. Other than myself, is like you said, that humbleness. I've yeah. been dealing with, or I've dealt with, uh, you know, local rappers from the area, and I um, reach out to them to collab or do this, that, and the other, and they'll be like, um, yeah, you gotta reach out to my manager. Like, nigga, what? Bro, we all the, the same fuck boat. is you talking about? Exactly. South Jersey, we they all don't the understand same that, boat. or because they feel like you know what I mean, and within their little circle, yeah, they hot. But I'm like, bro, nobody, if you, I'll I, I say this, man. If you can't walk up and down the street and ask the average Joe, yo, you ever heard of such and such? Mm -hmm. if, and if they can't say, yeah, I heard of him, I fuck with boy, or whatever the case may be, or even not just I heard of you, yeah. you ain't buzzing yet. Yeah. All Because yeah. before Meek popped off, you could ask the average nigga in Philly or Jersey or Delaware, yo, you ever heard of Meek? Like, yeah, I know Meek. Yeah, I just got yeah. done bumping the Flamers too, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got to have your buzz like that. Yeah, shit on smash. Only nigga I can ever really say that even had some. Leeway is Beer Fontaine. Yeah. That's the only nigga that, Shout out to that, that nigga. really, you know what I'm saying? Other than that, we all in the same boat as artists. But uh, speaking of artists, artistry, where do you see yourself going in the next five years? Like, what's your plan uh, to take over Jersey for the next five years? The plan is to just keep building, man. Like, keep dropping quality music, putting out quality content, and just building myself and, uh, you know, building that budget up. To put my money behind myself and uh you know what I mean taking over, man. Just consist consist consistently, mm -hmm. you know, working and right. grinding. Like that's the only way. That's the five year plan. Keep working. Shit, man. That sounds dope to me, man. And like just tell let the people know where they can find you and all that shit. Like, yeah. So uh oh, first matter of fact, I skipped the one thing. What do you got coming next? Like what's next up? Like Yeah, next up is the new album Birth by the Cold. You know what I'm saying? Dropping at the top of the year. I'm trying to drop it January 1st for the new year. You know what I mean? New Year's Day. But if not, definitely within that first three months of the year of the new year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's where I'm that's where I'm at right now. I'm locked in on album mode. 
album mode. Ain't nothing like it, man. Do you got any artists or anybody that you're working with right now on that? Uh, Producers? nah, nah, not, not, not necessarily nobody, uh, you know, specific. Just dealing with different producers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I, you know what I mean? That I found, you know, um, you know, through my resources. Mm -hmm. And I got different singers coming in, different musicians coming in to do hooks or just, you know, to play their instruments on the album. That's so, dope shit, man. That's dope shit, man. Yeah. Tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, so my social media is, is L O underscore Slim He Lou. That's L O underscore S L I M H E L U. The YouTube is Loyalty Over Money Space TV. That's Loyalty O V A Money Space TV. And uh, yeah, man, get with me. Yeah, man. Make sure you tune into that LO. Make sure you tune into No Scope TV. Like and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, all that good shit. And uh, we out this junk. Yo. I'm the man with the iron, leave them all ghosts. Throwing shots, eyes closed. That's a no scope. That's a no scope.